Thank you. And we continue this afternoon with topical questions. Question number one from Jenny Mara. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to assist the Dundee-based firm McGill, which has entered into administration and announced an initial 374 redundancies. Minister Jamie Hepburn. The Scottish Government is concerned that McGill and Co Limited has gone into administration since being made aware of the company's cash flow problems. Scottish Enterprise engaged closely and offered assistance with the turnaround plan. However, McGill did not provide the required financial information in time for the appropriate due diligence to be undertaken. I also spoke with McGill's managing director throughout this uh, process and offered my full support. McGill responded to my offer to speak with uh, any of their major debtors and I spoke uh, with one they asked me to on two occasions. Unfortunately, McGill's trading situation declined and a positive outcome was not possible. Our partnership action for continuing employment PACE team was present on Friday when McGill informed staff that it was appointing an administrator. A PACE event to support employees will be held on Thursday in Dundee. I spoke with the administrator in Unite yesterday. The administrator is exploring all options for a sale of business and Scottish Enterprise will maintain contact with the, with the administrators and look to introduce and assist any viable interested parties. We will continue to offer support to those employees who have been made redundant to support them back into employment. Jenny Mara. That's possibly the most inadequate answer I've ever heard in this Parliament. That is not my understanding of the situation at all. I understand on very good authority from McGill that they provided all that was asked for in a very timely way. Presiding officer, 450 people are going to lose their jobs and our thoughts today are with the workers and their families, but they know that this shouldn't have happened. McGill is a company with a £40 million order book. It is profitable. They had a cash flow situation. They went to the government on the 9th of November, the same week we heard that Michelin was closing and asked for a loan. 12 weeks later, last Wednesday, 12 weeks later, Scottish Enterprise went back to McGill and said no to that £2 million loan to cover cash flow. When Prestwick Airport received £46 million of Scottish Government loans with no indication of when they would be paid back, when Bifab can secure £35 million, Ferguson Marine £45 million, why couldn't McGill get just £2 million to save 450 jobs when Dundee is reeling from the Michelin and HMRC closures? Can the Minister tell me who made the decision not to give McGill the loan? And why, given the scale of job losses in Dundee, did he not instruct Scottish Enterprise to make that loan available and save these jobs? Minister. Well, I, I, I'm sorry, Ms Mara feels the answer was inadequate. Let me say she may have thought she had it on good authority, but my answer is entirely uh, accurate. Uh, the issue, of course, is that McGill had no historic link with Scottish Enterprise. It was not an account managed uh, company by Scottish Enterprise. The first time it approached Scottish Enterprise was to say it was in financial difficulty. That was the first uh, juncture it had any uh, interaction. Uh, at that stage, Scottish Enterprise uh, offered to support the uh, company through uh, funding KPMG to review the cash position and evaluate uh, options, uh, asking for uh, a business plan. Uh, on the 18th of December 2018, Scottish Enterprise emphasised the need for a revised business and turnaround plan again at that juncture. And unfortunately, the revised uh, business plan did not come uh, till some uh, time uh, 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 after we were first approached. And very unfortunately, not within the time for it to be given proper consideration through, through due, due diligence. I would regret, though, if we were to turn this issue into some form of political knockabout. Uh, Jenny Mara at the end said that our, her primary thoughts were with, with the workforce at the time, this time. I would hope that would be the case for anyone in this chamber. That is exactly where my thoughts are. That is exactly where my priority is. Our PACE initiative has intervened. It has intervened quickly. We uh, will have that event on the 7th of uh, this uh, month uh, only less than a week since the company went into administration. And the task now for us all is to unite, to support that workforce, to get back into employment, not to engage in some form of political knockabout on this most important of issues. Yeah. Jenny Mara. This is utter complacency. Pace is for continuing employment. Does Jamie Hepburn not realise the state of the Dundee economy? The job toll is running into the thousands. 
Are, is the Minister telling us that companies have to be account managed to approach Scottish Enterprise to save 450 jobs? All they were told throughout this whole process was that they didn't fit the government's model. Twelve weeks the Minister had to sort this out, to get his people at Scottish Enterprise to help McGill to save these jobs. Twelve weeks. What kind of timescale? Is that in a commercial environment that it takes 12 weeks to do that and then they decide that they are not going to grant that loan? Presiding officer, why can millions and millions of pounds go to other parts of the country when Dundee cannot get one penny for McGill's? 400, 450 people are losing their jobs. The minister who failed to act here should also consider his position for this utter negligence. Minister. Well, let, let me say, Ms Maris, you'd probably listen to the answers I gave a, a little more closely. I did not say at any juncture, and it is not the case that a company has to be account managed to approach Scottish Enterprise for assistance. But of course, the point is, if a company has that prior engagement, then it might place them in a better place to be able to get earlier intervention if they're having financial difficulties. And I'm sure Ms Mara understood that to be uh, the point. In terms of, I'm not going to re-rehearse the points about, Ms Mara talks about no investment going into Dundee. Of course, we've just announced a £150 million city region deal. So the idea that we're not investing in Dundee does not bear up to scrutiny. But the circumstances here, the immediate circumstances before us are a company that has unfortunately not been able to continue to trade despite the best efforts of Scottish Enterprise, despite the best efforts of my officials and I tell Ms Mara right now, despite my best efforts as well, engaging directly with the company, engaging directly with some of their major debtors at, their, at my offer and at uh, their request for intervention. Unfortunately, we've not been able to uh, ensure the company has been able to sustain itself. We will, of course, do everything we can to get the workforce back into employment. That is a priority. We will do everything we can, of course, to support the administrator to get a new buyer. That is something I hope that everyone in this chamber would welcome, something we should collectively uh, commit to doing. Shona Robertson. Thank you. Um, I think we all acknowledge what a difficult time it is for those who have lost their jobs at McGill and not least the families of, of those who have lost their jobs. Uh, Joe Fitzpatrick and I spoke yesterday with the administrators, KPMG, and received uh, assurances that they are actively looking for a buyer for the company, which I believe should be possible given the extensive order book that McGill had. So does the minister agree that this would be the best uh, outcome for uh, local jobs? And can I ask what communication he has had with KPMG about the options going forward? And finally, what support can be offered to the many apprentices uh, that, uh, as I understand, around 75 apprentices to ensure that they are able to continue their apprenticeships with alternative local employers. I think we need to focus on the, the workforce and uh, those who are absolutely needing our support at the moment. And I hope the Minister can give some assurances in that regard. Minister. Uh, can I uh, thank the, the member for her question? And of course, can I thank uh, her and her colleague, Joe Fitzpatrick, as the the city's uh, constituency representatives in this place for uh, taking the time to come and meet with uh, me earlier today at their request. Of course, I'd be happy to, to speak with any uh, member who wants to, to speak to me uh, about this uh, particular uh, issue. Uh, yes, I uh, agree clearly. Uh, our immediate priority is supporting uh, the workforce. That includes, and we have our PACE event on the 7th of February. Uh, it of course, includes uh, apprentices. We have uh, the Adopt an Apprentice Scheme, which uh, is administered by Skills Development Scotland, uh, which uh, is a very successful uh, initiative. It provides funding uh, for employers to be able to take on uh, an apprentice that's been made they've done with a, a range of support for the uh, employer and apprentice. We will be making every effort to ensure apprentices are uh, redeployed and can continue and complete their uh, apprenticeship. In terms of the administrator, as I said in my initial answer, I, I spoke with them yesterday. It was clearly quite an early juncture at that stage. Rightly, their priority on Friday had been supporting uh, the workforce, as it should be everyone's. Uh, and, uh, when I spoke to them yesterday, as I say, it was quite early in terms of uh, the prospects going forward. I do believe, given that there is an order book, we can find another buyer, and that should be something we also set ourselves as a task, and it will be something that this government is willing to do everything it can to assist the administrator in that effort. Willie Rennie. 
Um, I just want to follow up a little bit on what Jenny Marrow was uh, discussing earlier. Um, the Minister was indicated that there was a lack of time for due diligence to be conducted. Why was that the case if it was a 12-week process from which they first approached uh, the business? Uh, and what were the specific reasons as to why that support or that request for support was rejected? Minister. So, uh, as I have at least attempted to set out, at the time of the initial contact, there was uh, a particular request. There was some engagement between KPMG, paid for by Scottish Enterprise, not by uh, McGill, I re-emphasise, uh, at that stage, it was very uh, clearly indicated that a full business plan had to be made, and that was not made, and that was not provided until some time later. At which stage, there was not uh, the time uh, for the due diligence to be undertaken, according to the company, in terms of uh, the time scale that they had to uh, operate to. That is unfortunate. If there had been, and of course, few, full due diligence would have uh, been provided. Uh, let me say, I recognise that uh, Mr. Rennie will probably have constituents affected by this, as will my colleague uh, Mr Day, uh, and he will not have had the update from me because obviously I've written to constituency representatives uh, for the three sites as well as the regional MSPs for uh, the North East of, of Scotland, for Lothians and for Glasgow. Uh, I'd be very delighted um, to, uh, or delighted is the wrong term because of the circumstance of course, but I'd be very willing uh, to provide him with uh, an update and uh, send him any uh, information he requires to be able to update his constituents accordingly. And Bill Bowman. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I just refer to my register of interests, which explains I was in the past a partner in KPMG, no connection now. The SNP government and SNP run council seem content to sleepwalk into a Dundee jobs crisis. It appears the minister knew of difficulties at this vital local employer and did not act effectively. This follows the inaction on Mitchell and before their bombshell news about its intention to withdraw from Dundee. Rather than form a coherent jobs first strategy for the city, armed with early notice of difficulties at major local employers, they seem content to cry crocodile tears after the fact. How is the minister arming the construction and manufacturing sectors in Dundee to avoid a repeat, a repeat of these unfortunate circumstances? Minister. Well, let me say in terms of early notification, this point has been made before, when we are in dialogue with a particular company it is on the basis of them having approached us looking for our assistance. We offer every assistance we can. There will be many situations that members in this chamber will not learn about because that assistance is successful and allows the company uh, to continue. It would be entirely the wrong thing for us at that juncture, that early juncture, to uh, flag uh, the concerns publicly because it would uh, breach trust and I believe it would cause uh, further problems. In terms of, yeah, again, uh, of support for uh, the Dundee uh, economy, uh, I would reiterate a point again, of course, that uh, we have uh, a £150 million Dundee City, uh, uh, Taste Cities region deal, which will support up to uh, 6,000 uh, jobs, lever over £400 million to the city region economy over the next 10 to 15 years. That is a serious commitment to Dundee and the wider area. And of course, we also have a significant uh, pipeline of uh, billions of pounds worth of investment in construction through our infrastructure investment plan, which will support the construction sector as well. Right now, though, with the specific circumstances, with McGill's President Officer, my commitment, my clear effort is to doing everything we can to support the workforce that has been badly impacted. Question number two, Lee MacArthur. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to reported allegations of mismanagement and a cover-up at the former Scottish Crime and Drug Enforcement Agency. Cabinet Secretary Hamza Yusuf. Police Scotland are considering the court's judgment that was published on the 31st of January. This is obviously an operational matter for Police Scotland, but I will, play, will pay close attention to how they intend to respond and also close attention to members' concerns. It's important to establish, of course, first and foremost, if these allegations are accurate and if so, how the circumstances surrounding them are, are then to be scrutinised. It's important to mention that these matters are still under active consideration by Police Scotland. Lee MacArthur. For that response, I mean, the Sunday Post has published details of an episode that sounds like a scene from life on Mars. Chaotic filing, a stash of documents from passports to credit cards and receipts, officers sent to buy an incinerator and petrol, documents taken to wasteland on the other side of the river to be disposed of before later being burned in a car park. This all throws up serious questions. While I appreciate that this happened in 2011, has the Scottish Government asked anyone at Police Scotland 
for their version of events? And has the Scottish Government considered referring the matter for further investigation by PERC or another police force in the UK? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I say that uh, to the member that I spoke to the Chief Constable this morning, and it's fair to say uh, that he also shares uh, shock at the alleged practice within SCDEA. It's important that we do uh, keep referring to these as allegations. Uh, it's important that uh, we, of course, uh, also recognise that this was before Police Scotland uh, was established. Notwithstanding all of that, the member is absolutely right to, 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 to uh, make the points that uh, these uh, practices, uh, of course, would raise uh, concern. What I would say about the current regime, and it's really important that I make this point, that around the current regime in Police Scotland, uh, there is uh, independent and judicially led uh, oversight uh, by IPCO, who provide uh, oversight uh, of, of investigatory powers. Uh, Police Scotland's most recent inspection took place on the 17th to the 21st of September 2018. That was led by uh, Lord Brackadale uh, and Lord Bonamy. But uh, there is, uh, of course, the ability for Police Scotland to appeal this judgment. Therefore, I think it's important we let Police Scotland uh, determine what route they, they intend to take forward. But thereafter, the options that the member raises in terms of further scrutiny uh, are all options that should be on the table. Mr. MacArthur. Thank the Justice Secretary for that further response. He says this was um, not the responsibility of Police Scotland. It doesn't sound uh, like it was the responsibility of anybody. Two of the people who were right at the top of the SCDA uh, announced their retirement last week. It was denied that this had anything to do with these matters. The Scottish Government has already asked Dame Ailish Angelini to look into complaints handling, investigations and misconduct issues in relation to policing, following concerns that senior officers could retire in order to avoid being the subject of misconduct allegations. Does the Cabinet Secretary think these rules do now need changing? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, look, I'm not going to do anything to prejudge uh, Dame Alicia Angelini's uh, review in the times I've appeared in front of the Justice Committee. I've often said to the member uh, that it's important that Dame Alicia has the independence to, to, to take the uh, review in the direction that she wishes. And if the member wants to make direct representation to Dame Alicia Angelini on that matter, he absolutely can. As I say, it is important to see and to determine what the police, what police Scotland's next moves uh, will be uh, in, this in this regard. But uh, in terms of scrutiny, independent uh, scrutiny of these allegations, determining whether they have, uh, whether they are accurate or not, uh, I am open to listening to members' concerns and suggestions in that regard. Liam Kerr to be followed by Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Look, as with a number of the scandals that have rocked Scottish policing in recent years, these allegations look like a, a failure of leadership and oversight at the top. Now, the Cabinet Secretary talked of the current regime being more robust. So can he assure us that the practices that allegedly took place at the SCDA would be impossible in the new structure of Police Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Well, as I say, having spoken to the Chief Constable himself, he said he, he's absolutely shocked at these allegations. So therefore, uh, of course, uh, you know, I wouldn't expect these uh, practices uh, to be taking place in, in Police Scotland. But it is really important to distinguish the SEDEA uh, from, from Police Scotland. These, are, these uh, allegations, uh, alleged practices took place in, in, in 2011. In terms of the first part of his question, I reiterate that there are currently uh, there is currently uh, independent and judicially led oversight in terms of uh, investigatory uh, powers and, and, and the uh, uh, CHIS code of practice. Uh, so it is important to say that that, 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 that uh, oversight exists. And important to say that it was only a matter of months ago that the inspection team led by Lord Brackadale and Lord Bonamy uh, reported uh, uh, or investigated uh, a routine investigation into Police Scotland's investigatory powers uh, and there was no substantial issues uh, that were raised in that regard. But uh, notwithstanding all of that, as I said to Liam MacArthur, um, it's important we let Police Scotland uh, decide uh, how they're going to move forward in, in relation to a specific case. But equally, uh, in terms of scrutinising these allegations, uh, we should keep, uh, and I certainly will keep an open mind to how that is done. Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The, the reports in the Sunday Post are worrying because I think they reopen many of the questions regarding undercover policing, but they also cast a shadow of doubt regarding the previous investigation into those issues. So I have heard what the Cabinet Secretary had to say, but surely there is a question whether it's appropriate to leave it to Police Scotland. Surely we need an independent investigation into the destruction of the, or alleged destruction of this evidence, and surely that requires a, an external police force in order to do that. 
And indeed, overall, does he not accept now that we have to have a full and independent review, not just into these matters, but into undercover policing as a whole, because of the questions that this raises? Cabinet Secretary. Well, can I take the various points that he makes, and let me try to clarify perhaps uh, what have been said has been misinterpreted. Uh, when it comes to Police Scotland, uh, I'm saying that they are currently, uh, of course, uh, subject to, to, to this proceeding. Uh, they have a choice on whether to appeal that proceeding or not, and therefore I wouldn't want to prejudice uh, that court process. When it comes to scrutinising the veracity of these allegations, the accuracy of these allegations, uh, I don't disagree with, with, with what has been said by Lee MacArthur or indeed Daniel Johnson, that to give confidence in that, there would have to be a measure of independence. We know uh, that, that Police Scotland, uh, for example, there are a number of routes that that could take, pl uh, take place through, uh, and, and uh, Daniel Johnson has made one suggestion, which should be on the table. So I don't, uh, I hope I can clarify uh, the nuance of, of that point. In terms of uh, a, a public inquiry, uh, it's worth saying that the pitch for inquiries is, is, is known. Uh, the most recent uh, letter from the Minister of State for Policing and Fire Service says uh, then in, in, in June of last year uh, made the point, and I'll quote uh, directly, that the inquiry under its current terms of reference can receive evidence from key witnesses in relation to the tasking by English and Welsh forces of undercover officers who were also deployed outside of England and Wales. So therefore, in terms of England, English and Welsh forces and uh, the, the, the serious allegations made in relation to their practices uh, in Scotland or potentially in Scotland, that can be, uh, that can be investigated by the inquiry. In terms of uh, the, the, the current structure of undercover policing, as I said, there was an HMICS report, of course, an independent report. Uh, and, of course, uh, there is independent, judicially-led uh, oversight uh, of that uh, as well. Uh, what I would say is the, the ex possible extension of the pitch for inquiry was, of course, subject to judicial review. That judicial review was dismissed. And I'm sorry, that's all we have time for this afternoon. We've already gone six minutes over. Apologies to Rona Mackay, Neil Findlay and John Finney, who all wish to ask further.